let's go and do some questions and we'll do uh, chapter 15 after the break. We left off with preterm labor and uh, we're going to go to the next topic, which is premature membrane rupture. Okay, this, this is our uh, uh, handout. Okay, 29 year old gravity 2 per 0 AB1, 31 weeks gestation, comes to labor and delivery complaining of vaginal fluid leakage since early this morning. That's your key term vaginal fluid leakage. Her pajama pants got moist, as well as her bed linens. Her fetus is moving well. Prenatal care since 15 weeks. What are you thinking could happen? You're concerned about premature rupture membranes, right? Premature rupture membranes. What's the three criteria? It's going to be done by speculum exam. Pulling positive, nitrogen positive, fern positive. Let's start out by doing speculum exam. For sure. You will not have a positive speculum exam with urinary incontinence. Okay, so we do a speculum exam. There is pulling, there is nitrosine, there is ferning. All are positive. Now she's 31 weeks. Okay. Remember the triaging of patients is based upon gestational age. Less than viability, less than 24 weeks, 24 to 34, and over 34. But before that, do all patients who have premature rupture membranes deserve to prolong the pregnancy? No. In fact, we need to find out, are there reasons that it would be unsafe? Assess if the pregnancy should be prolonged. And what were the three things that we talked about, if you remember? One was, is she in having contractions? Two was... Is there any fetal monitor abnormalities? And the third was, does she have chorioaminitis? If she has labor, if she has non reassuring fetal monitor pattern, if she has chorioaminitis, we do not want to prolong the pregnancy. All right. Toco monitor shows no contractions. So that's good. Fetal monitor tracing shows 175 beats a minute baseline with repetitive, severe, variable decelerations. Do we want to continue this pregnancy? Speculum exam, observation, tocolytic agents, immediate delivery, IV antibiotics. I think I might want to get this baby out. Severe, variable decelerations. The next one. The a monitor shows no contractions. The fetal monitor shows 175 beats a minute baseline with accelerations. Are you happy with accelerations? Yes, I'm happy with accelerations. However, she's got a fever of 102. Her urinalysis within normal, no white cells, no bacteria. Her lungs are clear. If you have a fever, urinalysis normal, lungs clear, with a patient who has ruptured membranes, by definition, she's got chorioaminitis. Do you want to deliver her? I mean, do you want to prolong the pregnancy? No. I want to start some IV antibiotics. What antibiotics would you like to use on a patient with chorioaminitis? We talked about this. This is to cover the normal vaginal flora, and we're going to use clindamycin and genomycin. Excellent. Okay. We were 31 week. Now we are 30. Well, 33 weeks, no. Start IV oxytocin, no. So we're going to start the amoxicillin and erythromycin. This is to uh, cover for a subclinical chorioaminitis, which we assume led to rupture of the membranes. Okay, here she was 33 weeks with rupture of membranes. Here she is 38 weeks. 
everything is the same otherwise. How do you manage premature rupture membranes at 38 weeks? Let's get her delivered. 34 weeks and more, we will deliver. Induced labor or cesarean, whatever is obstetrically indicated. Less than tw 24 weeks or less, well, if she's less than 24 weeks, have her go home or induce labor. Between 24 and 34, we will watch in the hospital. Okay, very good. Post dates. We're interested in, are the dates sure? Is the cervix favorable? And the fetus. So here we are, 24 year old, gravity of six, para five, comes to the outpatient clinic for transfer of prenatal care. She states she is 42 weeks gestation. Says she is. Do you know that? Do you need to confirm that if you're going to do something about it? Now, the funnel height is 36 centimeters. Maybe she's only 36 weeks. So, Vital signs are stable. Next step in management, identify the accuracy of dating. You all got that. Because you need to find out, is she really at risk for prolonging the pregnancy? So the records review shows her first prenatal visit was two weeks ago. How accurate is her dating then? Not very accurate. So what do we do? Assess how favorable her cervix is. No, because we're not going to deliver her. Estimate fetal weight. There's no really need to do that. NSTs, AFIs, and her weight labor. I like that. We're just going to let her go into labor. And we will monitor to make sure she doesn't get into trouble. Because when you don't know how far along she is, let her be. Okay. Review of record shows prenatal care at 10 weeks gestation. Is that pretty good? Yes. Cervical exam, three centimeters dilated, 70% effaced, soft, mid position, zero station. Is that a good Bishop score? Yes. Cervix is ripe. Fetus is cephalic presentation. When she is 42 weeks with a favorable cervix, is there any possible benefit to continuing the pregnancy? No. So what do we do? Favorable survey estimate, fetal weight, NST, amniotomy with IV oxygen. That's the one right there. Let's start amniotomy and IV oxytocin. Get the show on the road. Now, notice it has prostaglandin. What would be the only time you'd like to use prostaglandin? Well, you should use prostaglandin. The only use for prostaglandin is when you have a cervix, which is... Immature. Okay, why don't we say if it's not ripe, if it's unfavorable? Exactly. You guys got it. That would be the only time. Otherwise, oxytocin. Okay, she's 42 weeks gestation. Her fundal height is 36. Review of, of prenatal care was a 10 week confirmed by Sono. So her dates are good. She does not have a big baby. Cervical exam is closed, long, firm, posterior floating. It's not a very good cervix. The fetus is a phallic presentation. Now, what would you do here? You've got a number of options. Now, what I talked about in the flow chart is we would go ahead and use prostaglandin. And I think that is certainly a reasonable thing to do. But let me just throw this in. If the fetus isn't too big, if the mom wants to wait, as long as NSTs and AFIs are okay, I would go along with that. But in most cases, we would induce labor with prostaglandin. Now, I'm going to change the scenario just a little bit. She's 42 weeks and 36 centimeters. Now, it's 42 weeks and 45 centimeters. What do you think this 45 centimeters might represent? I think this could be a muy grande bebé. I think in this situation, I might want to estimate fetal weight. And if the estimated fetal weight was over 4,500 grams in a non-diabetic, uh, I mean, in a diabetic of 45,000 uh, grams um, in a non-diabetic, anyway, you get the idea. If you've got a huge baby with an unfavorable cervix, see what the uh, estimated fetal weight is. 
Okay, now we're going to look at how do we handle meconium. Fetus is cephalic presentation. She is being induced. Cervix is six centimeters. Amniotomy, three plus meconium. Fetal monitor shows 150 baseline with recurrent mild variable decelerations. What can we do in the first stage of labor for meconium? Amnioinfusion. We talked about that. I showed you the picture. Okay, let's take some questions on hypertension in pregnancy. Have you got this uh, branded into your brain? I hope so. Okay, 19-year-old gravita one per zero comes to the outpatient clinic at 34 weeks gestation. Prime gravita, 34 weeks, bundle height, 35 centimeters. Is that about right? Yeah, that's about right. Blood pressure, does this meet the criteria for hypertension? Yeah, 140 over 90. Other vital signs are within normal limits. Fetal movements are positive. Does she have preeclampsia? Well, let's ask first. Does she have hypertension? What you need in order to have hypertension is not just a single reading, right? It's not just a single reading. We need to repeat it and then check for urine protein. See, what if she just had a, a fight with her boyfriend? What if she just about got run over by a car if she was coming across the parking lot? So we want to repeat the blood pressure, check for urine protein. Let's see what that shows us. Repeat blood pressure is 125 over 75 after 15 minutes of left lateral rest. Urine dipstick shows negative protein. Does she have a problem? Does she have a problem? No. What would you like to do? A. Outpatient, no problem. Okay, here we repeat blood pressure with 125 over 75. Here on this next case, it's 150 over 92. Otherwise, everything is the same. 19 year old, gravita one, blood pressure elevated, mildly elevated, only mildly, and negative protein. What is the diagnosis with hypertension? Negative protein after 20 weeks gestation. And the answer would be, what kind of hypertension? Gestational hypertension. What is the management for gestational hypertension? Outpatient conservative management. Do we need to lower this diastolic blood pressure? No, it's fine. We want to keep it between 90 and 100. All right. Outpatient management with Aldomet and Labetalol would be if you needed to lower the blood pressure. If it was 160 over 110 blood pressure, this is fine. It's not normal, but you don't want to de, uh, I mean, um, hypoperfuse the uterus and the placenta and the baby. Okay, let's go on to the next one. New case, 36 year old gravita four para three. I want you to notice this was a 19 year old. All of these are. 19 year olds and that's going to be gestational hypertension but when you get a woman over 30 you need to think of chronic hypertension much more common so she's 36 years old gravity four pair of three comes to the outpatient clinic at 17 weeks she has a history of chronic hypertension prior to the pregnancy so that nails down the diagnosis 11 week sonogram confirms the dates Blood pressure is 135 over 85. Other vital signs are within normal limits. Fetal movements are positive. Now, are you going to tell this woman, you don't have chronic hypertension. Your blood pressure is normal. Is it possible that she can have the underlying pathophysiology of chronic hypertension, but normal blood pressure in the first part of the pregnancy? Yes. So don't get caught by that. If she has a history of hypertension, we're going to monitor her and treat her as if she has hypertension. Because remember, the normal changes of pregnancy, blood pressure goes down. So in her case, outpatient conservative management. We don't need to change anything, but she's got chronic hypertension. Let's look at the next case. Exactly the same. But what's different? The blood pressure. The blood pressure now is in the hypertensive range. But is it mild or severe? 
145 over 92. See, that's only mild. Do we treat mild hypertension? No. We're okay. Outpatient conservative management, until her diastolic goes over 100, there's no evidence that there is any benefit from lowering it. In fact, you may decrease the, the, the perfusion of the fetus and the placenta. Okay, same case, but she's 160 over 110. See, we started out with 135 over 85, then we went to 145 over 92, and now we're going to 160 over 110. Do we need to lower the blood pressure now? Yes, we do. She's 17 weeks. Do we can do this outpatient or inpatient? Outpatient. Outpatient. Alpha, 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 uh, alpha methyl dopa or labetalol. Good. Okay, let's uh, leave that here and let's take our... Uh, Last break of the evening. See you in 10 minutes.
Okay. Uh, can you hear me all right? Okay, I'm looking at the public chat that you guys are talking about. And uh, let me tell you something on premature rupture membranes, which we went over. Until very recently, the indications for beta methasone were 34 weeks with membranes intact and 32 weeks with membranes ruptured. Very recently, the American College of OBGYN has said 34 weeks for both of those ruptured membranes and uh, intact membranes. Now, the notes in the book still say 32, and I'm not sure how long it takes for that to make its way through the system. I think if they give you a possible 34 weeks, I would probably do that. Okay, let's continue on. Um, okay. 36-year-old gravity 4 para 3, 33 weeks gestation, history of chronic hypertension prior to the pregnancy on oral methyl dopa. 11 weeks sonogram confirms the dates. Previously, blood pressure was 140 over 90. Today, the 110 repeating. Urine dipstick had been 1 plus, but today it is 3 plus. Chronic hypertension, previously diagnosed. Now her blood pressure is going up. Her proteinuria is going up. What is the um, diagnosis? Chronic hypertension, aggressive or conservative management. Aggressive, inpatient or outpatient, inpatient. So on this patient, I would give IV mag sulfate. I would give hydralazine and deliver. Now, beta methasone. Do we want to give beta methasone? She's 33 weeks. She would be a candidate. How much time do you have? Do you need to do an emergency cesarean pretty quickly? See, it takes 48 hours, Gloria, for it to work. Anyway, you got the idea. You know what the issues are. Read the cases pretty carefully. These are imperfect questions written by imperfect professor or imperfect student. Okay, 21-year-old gravita 1 per 0 brought to emergency department at 29 weeks gestation following a generalized seizure. Blood pressure is 150 over 95. Urine dipstick is 3 plus. So here she is, 21-year-old, uh, first pregnancy, third trimester, just entered the third trimester, generalized seizure, hypertension, proteinuria. What's your working diagnosis? This is eclampsia. What do you want to do with eclampsia? IV max sulfate and deliver. Do we need to lower the blood pressure? No, not at 150 over 95. Now the beta methasone, that is another issue. And I probably need to rewrite these. It, it really, if you look down at it, she needs to have uh, IV max sulfate for neural protection, should get um, beta methasone for fetal lung maturity and max sulfate for the convulsions. Okay, 21-year-old gravita 1 per 0, seen in the outpatient prenatal clinic at 35 weeks, new onset of epigastric pain and bilateral headache. Blood pressure 150 over 95, urine dipstick is uh, 3 plus. Okay, what do we need to do? What's the diagnosis? Gravita 1, Third trimester, hypertension, dipstick, 3 plus. She's got preeclampsia. Is it mild or severe? Mild. she got, I mean severe, because she's got epigastric pain. What do we do with severe preeclampsia at 35 weeks? We're going to deliver. Do we need to lower the blood pressure? No, that's okay. So the main thing that I think I would do here is, well, what happened here? This kind of, it should be down on C. I agree with you guys. IV max sulfate and deliver. She doesn't need fetal neuroprotection. She doesn't need the beta methasone. 
Okay, the, the case is exactly the same, but I'm going to change it, just the blood pressure. Make the blood pressure 170 over 115, from 150 over 95 to 170 over 115. Now, in that case, you need to both blood, bring the blood pressure down and give them max sulfate. So this actually should be somehow the um, um, processing of the of the file has br brought this down here. And this really was supposed to be a D. So you guys are right. This looks like it's wrong. I don't know why the processing of the file didn't work out. OK. 33 weeks, blood pressure. Oh, she's a 21-year-old, gravita 1. 33 weeks, blood pressure 155 over 95. Unchanged, on repeat, 20 minutes later. Urine dipstick is 2 plus. Fetal movements are present. No epigastric pain, visual disturbances, no headache, no history of hypertension. Okay, what is our working diagnosis here? Mild preeclampsia, right? Mild preeclampsia, she has mild hypertension, got 2 plus protein. She has no epigastric pain, visual changes. No. I would want to give her beta methasone. And I think we need to give her more time with mild preeclampsia. Would you agree, Gloria? I think so. So, okay, I think that's where we'll go on that. And I think that's all. Okay, diabetes. 32-year-old gravity 3 para 2 seen in the outpatient prenatal clinic at 28 weeks with a one-hour oral glucose tolerance test of 135. Her prenatal course had been unremarkable. Vital signs are stable. Fetal movements are positive. Do we have a problem with a one-hour test of 135? No. Observation. We're doing fine. She has a negative screening test. No further follow-up. Let's change the scenario. Just one number we're going to change it from 135 to 155. Now what do we want her to do? Does she have a positive screening test? Yes. So the next step in management is going to be the one hour of the three hour 100 gram oral glucose tolerance test. Now, what's the most likely outcome of the three hour test? You think it'll be gestational diabetes or it'll be normal? And most likely it'll be normal. Remember the rule of 15s? Okay, the three hour 100 gram oral glucose tolerance test, one value out of four is high. Does she have gestational diabetes? No. What do we call this with one elevator? You need two values. It is called impaired glucose tolerance. Very good. But not gestational diabetes. So just observation will be fine. Two values out of four are high. Same case, only two values are high. Does she have GDM? Yes, she does. So what's our next step with GDM? Repeat the test, home glucose monitoring, insulin, NSTs, AFI. We want to do home glucose monitoring. Does she uh, maintain her blood sugars properly with a good diet? Are you with me? What's the diet like? And the home glucose will tell us if her values are in the acceptable range. Okay. Home glucose records. Fasting blood sugar is 110. Are you happy with a 110 blood fasting blood sugar? I'm not. I'm not. What should it be? It should be less than 90. One hour postprandial, 160. What should a one hour postprandial be? Less than 140. So I don't like this. She's not managing with diet alone. So what do we need to do? Well, I, I had told you that we've now started to use gliburide. So you could go with either the uh, insulin or the gliburide. So that would be appropriate options. here. OK, she's 32 weeks. She's had a diagnosis of GDM made. She was started on insulin. Her home records now show 85 fasting. One hour postprandial 120. Are you happy with this? Happy with this? I'm happy with it. Shall we do anything? 
No. We're, um, oh, the only thing we need to do here is start NSTs and AFIs because she's 32 weeks. Are you with me on that? So if she is previous fetal demise, if she has coexisting hypertension, if she's on insulin or gliburide, then we need to start the fetal monitoring at 32 weeks. Okay, she's 39 weeks, diagnosis of GDM, she's on insulin. Fetus is cephalic presentation, which is head down, NST is reactive, AFI is 15, sonogram estimated fetal weight 4,000, cervix is three centimeters dilated, 70% effaced, soft, mid, minus one. Is there any benefit to waiting for her to go into labor? I don't think so. I'd go with an induction of labor. Why wouldn't we do a cesarean? What should the weight have to be before we would schedule a cesarean on a woman with diabetes? 45, 100, exactly. So in this case, I would give a chance. 